As a wise person once said, you can't judge a book by its cover, and never has nature proved this more pointedly than in the case of the adorable North American horned toad. Because the horned toad has a round body that looks like a frog or toad, it was given the name toad. Um, unlike frogs and toads, which are amphibians, the horned toad is actually a lizard and is found only in dry areas. Excuse me, class. Hello? Yes, of course. Yes, I know. The black hat. Yes, of course. Okay, bye then. I'm sorry, class. Now, about this toad that isn't a toad. 315 already? Everyone, please enjoy pages 68 to 75 for tomorrow, and I'll see you in the morning. That was really strange. Yeah, Miss Grokey never got a phone call in class before. Or run out of class like a sprinter without asking us if we had any questions. Yeah, and she didn't flash us her usual two sign. That's a peace sign, Gus. Clearly, Miss Grokey's mind is on something else. Something besides our little school. No way. The only important place to teachers is their classrooms. Is it, Spinelli? I mean, have you ever asked yourself what teachers actually do when school's over? I thought they just sat at their desk real still until we come back. Nah, I always figured they worked out at a faculty gym somewhere. You think? Come on! Serious postulation. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh bummer. I'm gonna be late. Oh, children, I didn't see you there. Well, I really must run. Peace! Uh, did Miss Crokey have handcuffs? Yeah, and a handkerchief, too. Talk about your weird. What could she possibly need those for? Don't know, Gretch, but I'm up to here with questions. I say we get some answers. Hold up, there she is. Boy, Miss Crokey's always telling us to keep our desk neat, but look how messy her trunk is. Yes, quite peculiar. Junior ain't the half of it. Let's look at the facts. Stroke gets a call in class and rushes out of school with a pair of handcuffs. And now we find our car's a big mess. It all adds up to one thing. Crokey's an offbeat undercover cop, like on TV. Or maybe she's with the Bureau. And that black bag's loaded with high-tech contraptions to help her catch aliens. I'm going teach on this one. I bet she got the call to go bust some perps. Two blocks from school, she'll probably slap a red light on top of her car. But Miss Crokey is such a sweet, kind, and gentle soul. Mikey's right. And let's all remember that it was Miss Crokey who taught us not to rush to conclusions about people. Good point, Gretch. What we need is more proof. Let's all meet back here tomorrow morning early. Then we can really start investigating. One way or another, we're going to uncover the secret life of Grokey. Hey, guys, see anything good and suspicious yet? Nope. Me and Gus have been staked out since 628, and all Miss Grokey's done is clean up the classroom and check papers. Correction, Teach. At 642, she did leave the room briefly for a drink of water. Nothing weird about that. Guys, look! Okay, now this is weird. Yeah, who is that schmendrick? Maybe he's her husband. I don't believe Miss Grokey is married. Shh, something's going down. Here we are, G. I believe this is the item. Thank you, V. This is exactly what the program calls for. Right then. Everything is go. What is that thing? My guess. It's some sort of police box. Whatever it is, it's evidence. Perhaps it contains the disguise. One of you is right. I'm almost certain of it. Cheerio! Look! That M.O. sticker on the bumper! That's the international abbreviation for Moldovakia. Moldovakia? Where the heck is that? Moldovakia is a former Eastern Bloc country famous for its luge team, tiny ceramic gnomes, and espionage. Of course! The mysterious phone call. The weird guy from Moldovakia. This creepy fog hanging around the school. There's no other explanation. Miss Grokey's a spy. A spy? My word. A fourth grade teacher. What a great cover. I can't believe it. I won't believe it. Believe it, Mikey. The box with the star from Miss Grokey's program. I'm telling you, guys. All the evidence points in one direction. S. P. Ah, actually, it's SPY. But TJ makes a rather compelling argument. But wait a second! Is she one of ours, or one of theirs? In 1988, a consortium of multinational conglomerates founded the Free Will Games, a series of sporting events held every eight and a half years to encourage international cooperation and goodwill. Uh, yes, Vince? Miss Grokey, in these so-called games, you root for the team representing our United States of America. Do you not? Of course I do, Vince. <laughs> So, in that spirit of international cooperation, many nations... Yes, Gus? You root that way because the U.S. is the best country in the whole wide world. Right, Miss Grokey? That's not necessarily true, Gus. In fact, many countries do far better than the United States. Oh, yeah? Name some. Well, historically...
historically, Scandinavian countries have done quite well. And of course, there's no beating the Moldovakian luge team. Oh, I see. Well, guys, it's a tie. 14 for our side, 14 for them. Which means we know as much about Miss Grokey's loyalties as we did before. There's one thing we haven't checked out. That box. I say we look inside. If it contains U.S. nuclear airplane secrets, we know she's one of them. If it contains plans for tiny ceramic gnomes, she's one of ours. Well, what are we waiting for? Here it is. The answer box. What if it's radioactive? Then I better open it. I'm wearing a jacket. Wait, friends. Consider for a moment if that box was yours. Would you want someone else to open it? Come on, Mikey. The security of the free world could be at stake. That doesn't change the fact that the box is property of Miss Grokey. Who cares? Open it up! Wait, guys. Somebody's coming! Children, why are you in here and not outside enjoying recess? Uh, we, uh, felt like reading. Oh, how refreshing, Vincent. Then let's all open our social science textbooks to Chapter 7, Democracy and You. Excuse me, Miss Grokey. Someone named V just called for you at the office. He asked that you meet him at 77 Glue Click Plots at 345 today. Oh, dear. Um, thank you for the message, Menlo. Certainly. All part of a boy's life. Um, excuse me, children. I, uh, I have some things I need to do. She took the box! Looks like there's only one way to solve this mystery now. And that means come 345, all of us are gonna be at 77 Good Luck Plates. Actually, TJ, it's pronounced... Glue Click Plots! Okay, guys, we got five minutes before Miss Grokey's supposed to arrive. Then we'll see what kind of after-hours espionage Miss Grokey's involved in. Whoa! A spy ring in Little Bavaria? Such deceit in the happiest neighborhood in town. It can't be. Hey, guys, this is number 77. A used bookstore? It's gotta be a front. Yeah, who in their right mind would go into a used bookstore? Well, actually, I occasionally... Quick, guys, secret agent Grokey at 10 o'clock. Come on! Password? Um, it's the plumber. I've come to fix the sink. It's been fixed. Sorry. Oh, man. Now how are we gonna get in there? Guys, if you're gonna catch a spy, you gotta think like a spy. Okay, our cup phone is in position. Now we just gotta wait for another spy to come along and shuck a con. We've got ourselves a password. Here comes someone now. TJ, I'm afraid the transduction capabilities of paper cups and strings simply isn't good enough to sh... Password. Swordfish. Whoa. Amazing. And now the truth of Grokey's double life will be revealed. Password. Swordfish. I'm not so sure this was a good idea. Come now, Gus. If Miss Grokey is welcome here, I imagine we'll be just fine. Children, excellent. Follow me. We'll begin at once. He seems quite nice. Are you crazy? He was expecting us. Something's definitely up. Everybody, follow my lead. Please, sit down, children. Now what? Uh-oh, we're doomed. <gasps> you can't make us talk. We don't know nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the one, the only, mysterious Crot Key. Thank you. And now, for my first trick. Glad we didn't open that box in the classroom. Let's hear it once more for the mysterious Groat Key. Groat Key! Groat Key! Groat Key! Groat Key! Goodness, what are you kids doing here? We were going to ask you the same thing, until we figured it out. You really had us going there, Miss Grokey. What with the leaving early and the phone calls and the magic box. And those cool trick handcuffs. That was truly a great escape. I almost left up to save you. Thank you all. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It just goes to show, you can't judge a book by its cover. Or a horny toad, neither. What question, Miss Grokey? Why be so secretive about your mastery of ledger domain and sleight of hand? Well, Gretchen, I've always had a passion for magic, but I never thought I was good enough. So I thought I'd try out my act here before showing you kids it's going.
cool. You've got nothing to worry about, Miss Grokey. You're the best magician ever. Well, then, perhaps I can start using my magic in class or even teaching you kids a trick or two, like how to do this. Wow. Wow. I'd like to propose a toast to the not-so-mysterious Grokey, a neat lady, a loyal American, and a magician par excellence. Actually, TJ, the term is par excellence. Check. And a heck of a teacher, too.